Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Heptonstall. I miss reading with you so much. So today, what I thought I would do is read two of our favorite books at Montessori. I know you'll recognize them because we read them all the time. Let's begin. The first book is The Book with No Pictures. I definitely know you know this one. Here we go. This is a book with no pictures. It might seem like no fun to have someone read you a book with no pictures. It probably seems boring and serious, except here is how books work. Everything the words say, the person reading the book must say. Oh, I guess that's me, huh? no matter what. That's the deal. That's the rule. So that means even if the words say, blork, what? That doesn't even mean anything. Blurf, wait a second, what? This isn't the kind of book I wanted to read and I have to say every word the book says, uh-oh. I am a monkey who taught myself to read. Hey, I'm not a monkey. And now I'm reading you this book with my monkey mouth and my monkey voice. That's not true. I am not a monkey. But someone in my house is. <laughs> Did you hear that? I've got a monkey in my house. Yes, I am a monkey. No. Also, I am a robot monkey. And my head is made of blueberry pizza. Wait a second. Is this whole book a trick? Can I stop reading, please? No. <sighs> and now it's time for me to sing you my favorite song. A song. Do I really have to sing a <gasps> glug, glug, glug? My face is a bug. I eat ants for breakfast right off the rug. What? This book is ridiculous. Can I stop reading yet? No. There are more pages. I have to read the rest. Oh. My only friend in the whole wide world is a hippo named Boo Boo Butt. Boo Boo Butt. And also, the kid I'm reading this book to is the best kid ever in the history of the entire world. Oh, really? That's you. And this kid is the smartest kid too because this kid chose this book even though it had no pictures because kids know this is the book that makes grown-ups have to say silly things. And oh, make silly sounds like, oh no, oh no, here it goes. Glurp, gawako, ma group, adu, ay, 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 brook, 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 oof, eep, blaggity, blaggity, glippity, gloppity, gloppity, glippity, beep, bop, ay. By doingy face. Oh my goodness. Please don't ever make me read this book again. It is so silly. In fact, it's completely and utterly preposterous. Next time, please, 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 please choose a, choose a book with pictures, please because this is just too ridiculous to read. The end. Bonk. I didn't want to say that. The end. Hope you enjoyed it. My second book is Earth to Stella. Time for bed, Stella, said Dad. As soon as you're settled, I'll be back to tell you a story. What sort of story would you like? 
A space story, please, said Stella. Stella brushed her teeth and washed her face. Then she climbed into her stripy spacesuit. Earth to Stella. Don't forget to scrub behind your ears, Dad called. Check, said Stella, because that's what astronauts say when they mean yes. Stella stepped into her spaceship and twisted her helmet on tight. Then she counted backwards. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off! The spaceship whooped into the sky. Earth to Stella. Could you keep the noise down, please? Stella zoomed towards the moon. She landed in a crater. The moon was very good for bouncing, so she bounced up and down by the Earth's eerie light. Earth to Stella. No jumping on the bed. Check. Back in her spaceship, Stella revved her engine and headed out through the solar system towards deep space and new stars. Vroom! Earth to Stella, are you tucked in tight? Up close, each star was like the sun, huge and round and hot. Some stars burned blush white, others flamed yellow, and some bloomed red rose. Stella liked the red stars best. Check. A comet whizzed by, trailing a long, fiery tail. It was wonderful to watch, but a bit scary, too. Zyke, said Stella, and she zoomed away. Earth to Stella, is everything all right? Stella found a beautiful planet spinning like a jewel around a little yellow sun. She decided to land on it. Whoosh. Earth to Stella. Please settle down now. Stella to Earth. I am setting down now. The spaceship touched down and Stella stepped outside. Suddenly, hundreds of tiny blue bugs were floating around her. They hummed softly. Zmm, zmm. One bug landed on her finger. It tingled and made her giggle. Then it tingled extra strongly for goodbye and flew back to its friends. Stella to Earth, we are not alone. I have discovered new life forms and they are very nice. But Earth did not answer. Stella to Earth, this is Stella calling Earth. No reply, suddenly, Stella did feel alone. Hmm, where is everyone on Earth? I have to go now, Stella said, but I'll be back soon. Goodbye, blue bugs. Stella zoomed back through the galaxy and landed safely in her bedroom. Stella to Earth, I'm back. But there was still no reply. Hmm, worried, Stella set off to explore her home planet. Dad was in the living room. He was snoring gently. Wake up, Earthling, said Stella. It's me. Oh, so I see, said Dad, and it's past your bedtime, said Stella. I know, but could we go and visit my new friends first? What new friends are those, asked Dad. Space friends, said Stella, in outer space. Zyke, said Dad. I will go get my space helmet. And off they went back to space. The end. Did you enjoy the stories I read to you today? I had so much fun reading them to you. I hope you're reading lots of books with mommies and daddies at home. And I can't wait to hear about any new stories that you have read when we get back to school. Just remember, I love you and I miss you. Bye.